Hey y'all, thanks for coming back to another What's For Dinner video. Today I have some really good meal ideas for you. I'm sharing three dinner ideas and one breakfast idea. If this is your first time to watch one of my videos, hey, I'm Beverly, a Louisiana stay-at-home mom and wife, and I share these kind of videos every week, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know which recipe you're going to try first. So the first meal idea that I'm going to share with you is a brisket. This brisket was already pre-seasoned and cooked, but I'm just warming it up in the Instant Pot. So I just put half a cup of water in the bottom there, and I'm going to cut a chunk off of this brisket. Um, we didn't need the whole thing because it was just me and my husband, and we have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. So we did not need that whole thing. I just cut a chunk off of it and stuck it in there, and then I'm going to pour some barbecue sauce over the top and kind of just smear it all over the brisket. So after I've got that barbecue sauce rubbed on there really good, I put the lid on, make sure it was on sealing, and then pressure cook for 20 minutes. So after all the steam released, I just opened it up and there it was. It turned out really good and since it was pre-sliced, I really didn't have to do anything to it. So now I'm going to share with you how I make um, deviled eggs. So I just have some boiled eggs there and right now I'm taking the yolks out of them. So then you just smash all the yolks down and after you smash them, you're going to go ahead and season them. So I used some um, dill mustard, some mayonnaise, and some um, Cajun redhead seasoning to season mine. And I didn't really measure too much, um, but you can kind of see how much I use. Um, it's like two heaping tablespoons of mayo, and then I squirted some mustard in there. That was probably about one and a half tablespoons. And then I just shook some of that seasoning on there until it looked good. So then I just scoop up the yolk mixture into a Ziploc bag and then I cut one of the tips and that's how I get the mixture into the egg whites. Then I pour a little bit of that Cajun seasoning into my hand and just sprinkle on the tops of the egg yolks. And this was so good, we served it with mac and cheese, green beans, and homemade rolls. The next meal we had is sausage and red gravy. So the first thing that you want to do is brown your sausage. And this is what I used, but any sausage will work, whatever's your favorite. So you just want to brown it up really well. After the sausage is brown to your liking, you can go ahead and remove it for now. And then after you remove all of it, you can add one and a half cups of pick sweet blend. This is just onions, bell peppers, and celery. So if you don't have any pick sweet blend, you could use um, fresh vegetables. And since my vegetables are frozen, that helps to get a lot of the browning off of the pan. But if your vegetables aren't frozen, you're going to want to add a little bit of water to the bottom of the pan to get that browning up. And I just added some salt and pepper to my veggies. So I'm going to let those cook down for about 15 minutes until they start to turn brown. So now that the veggies are browned, I went ahead and added some water like I talked about a while ago um, just to get some of that browning up off the bottom of the pan because that's going to be really good in your gravy. And then you can add the sausage back. Then I added two cups of crushed tomatoes and one can of Rotel. Then I added half a cup of water and one tablespoon of sugar. Then just season your gravy to taste with whatever you usually season your food with. I've really been enjoying this Cajun Redhead. Um, it's found in the Lake Charles area at most Rouse's stores. So if you're from around here, you can get it. You can get that. But then I added one fourth of a cup of um, Tony's Dry Roux. And you want to add that in just a little bit at a time and stir it immediately or else it will clump up. Oh, 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 
So then you want to turn the heat down low and put your lid on for about 30 to 45 minutes. And this is what it looked like when it was finished. So then I pushed that to the back burner so that I could start making my rice. I have two cups of rice and I just measure with my finger, uh, put enough water to get to my first knuckle and I season that with some salt and put in a little bit of butter. So I'm going to bring it to a boil and once it starts to boil I let it boil for about five minutes and then I lower the heat to a simmer and I put the lid on until the rice looks done. And I also cook some corn to go with it so I just basically melt a couple tablespoons of butter pour in the corn and season with salt and pepper and I'll let that cook on a simmer for probably about an hour. So to tell if your rice is starting to look done it has those little holes in it I don't know if you noticed that right before I started to stir it but then after it starts looking done I stir it up a little bit just to let some of the steam out. So this is always a big hit around the house the girls love rice and gravy and Thomas says that this is one of his favorite things that I make so we just served it over rice with corn on the side. And now I'm going to share the breakfast of champions with you guys. I got this biscuit and gravy recipe from the Hillbilly Kitchen, so I'll leave a link to her channel below. But basically, for the biscuits, you need two cups of self-rising flour, a third a cup of butter, and three-fourths of a cup of milk. Now, for her recipe, she says to cut in the butter like I just did there with the fork. But the next day, I made these and I melted the butter and poured it in there. And I really liked them a whole lot better with melted butter. But when you're making your dough, if it seems too dry, you can add some milk. And if it seems too wet, you can just add some flour. So after it's all mixed up really well, you just put it onto a floured um, surface. And then kind of flatten it out depending on how big you want your biscuits to be. Um, they will about double in size. So just keep that in mind when you're making your biscuits. And I'm just cutting my biscuits out with an old um, tomato paste can. You want to make sure the bottom of the biscuits are floured because that will prevent them from sticking and burning. So I just saved that leftover dough for later and I pop those biscuits in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 or 20 minutes until the tops were golden brown. So next I'm going to start working on the sausage and gravy. So Becky from the Hillbilly Kitchen says that she cuts off the end of the breakfast sausage rolls um, for the meat that she will put in the gravy and then she just cuts the rest of it up to make sausage patties. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, put some oil in the bottom of this pan and I'm just going to rub it around in there to make sure that nothing sticks and then I'll go ahead and start cooking those sausage patties. So after the biscuits were done, I just took a stick of butter and rubbed it over the top of these biscuits. But y'all, I'm telling you, I would melt the butter instead of cut it into the biscuit dough because the next day that I made these biscuits, they were so much better. But then I just went and took the ends of that um, sausage roll and fried that up and crumbled it up into pieces. And now I'm just removing some of that grease. Um, I left a little bit for some flavor, but I did remove most of it. So now you're going to add... Um, a third a cup of flour and just kind of mix that in there until it's blended well with the sausage. So after that's blended together go ahead and add two cups of milk and just keep stirring that around until your gravy gets as thick as you would like it to be. So after the gravy was the consistency that I wanted it to be, I went ahead and pushed it to the back burner and got started on my scrambled eggs. So I just put some butter in my skillet and that is a new skillet. It's a copper skillet. I love it so much. It cooks really well, especially eggs. So I just put all my eggs in this little bowl and I seasoned with salt and pepper. And then the key to good fluffy eggs is to just whisk and stir and stir and stir and stir until you just feel like you can't do it anymore. So then pour it into the skillet and let the eggs firm up a little bit before you start to stir. And then once they're firm, you can start stirring um, from the outside in and just kind of stir them all towards the middle and flip them around and stir them a little bit. Uh, you don't want to over stir it or else they'll be uh, small and won't be fluffy. So then I always add a little bit of cheese to my eggs right before they're finished. I turn off the heat and add the cheese 
and they come out really good this way I love cheesy eggs so this was really yummy but like I said earlier I really enjoyed the biscuits a lot better the next day when I made them again and I used melted butter instead of cutting the butter into the dough but you can do it either way whatever you think you would like better but this was really good definitely breakfast of champions uh, and it was definitely a treat So that night for dinner, I made cheeseburger pasta. So I started out by boiling some egg noodles and then I'm cooking down about a pound and a half of ground beef. I seasoned that up with some Tony Sacheries. So after the ground meat was finished, I went ahead and drained the grease and then I added a couple tablespoons of flour. I mixed that well into the ground beef and then I added one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream and I stirred that around really good and then I added some steak seasoning that I'll show you here in a minute. So after I seasoned it, I added a little bit of pasta water and then my SD card ran out of memory and I didn't notice. So in between those two clips, I did add a couple handfuls of cheese and then I went ahead and added a little bit more heavy cream just to give it a better consistency. And then after that, I just went ahead and added the noodles in and it, this was a super yummy meal, definitely comfort food. That's a wrap for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below and let me know which meal you're going to make first. See you next time.